My name is Rieger Lorenz. I play for the Overtook Spoilers, and I'm a 2022 NHL draft prospect. I'm coming on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Uh, Bone Singleton, play for the Overtook Spoilers, NHL 2022 draft prospect. I'm coming on the Only Only Touch Greatness podcast. Samuel Hawk, I play for the Overtook Spoilers, NHL draft year 22. I'm coming on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Looking for the most beers on tap, great steaks, great staff, head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, St. you. The number one sports podcast in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike are taking over the podcast scene in Vancouver. Get down or lay down. Lay down. Lay down. the blockers left in this third period up the ice here comes Sam Huck getting behind the Grizzlies defense on the right wing side sent Open, Lorenz shoots and scores! 
number 201, Lorenz Whistlet. Lorenz shoots and scores! And Big Mike. All right, uh, Rieger, uh, born in Calgary. Uh, tell us a little about your uh, hockey story, kind of where you started and uh, when you started and where you are now. Yeah, obviously, uh, born and raised in Calgary. Um, started playing hockey when I was around the age of four. And uh, now, not too far away from home, I'm playing in Okotoks. So, uh, yeah, it's been good so far. Okay. And uh, Bowden, same thing for you, bud. Uh, Calgary, and uh, tell us a little about when you started and where you started and uh, where you are now. Yeah, I started when I was around three in the good old backyard rink in the backyard, and then now playing for the Oak Oaks Oilers, which has been good. Sweet, sweet. And uh, Samuel, same for you, bud. Uh, born in Calgary. Uh, tell us a little about... Uh... Uh, yeah, I started back playing hockey in the ODR with my parents, and I was like around three or four, and now I'm back playing with the Oak Oaks Oilers experience. Sweet, sweet. And uh, go ahead, Ray. Okay, and what's one aspect of your game you guys are looking to improve on? We'll go with the same order for the questions, guys. Okay. Great. Perfect. Uh, I think just kind of utilizing my size a little bit more. Um, I think at a big frame, uh, just kind of uh, finishing checks, kind of stuff like that is something I can improve on. So. Okay. Yeah, for me, he's just more of a 200-foot player, just kind of going all around game, just playing better in the defensive zone. And, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, for me, using my speed more because I'm a smaller player and just using being more physical in the boards and around the ice. Okay. And uh, do you guys have any uh, nicknames? And what's your guys' favorite jersey number and why? Uh, the boys in the team, you should call me Riggs. And uh, number 14, uh, growing up, my favorite player was Jordan Everly, so he was born number 14. Oh, and my great uncle also played in the Bells. 14, so I was kind of stuck with that throughout my whole hockey career. Well, awesome. Beauty, beauty. I no one it. will ever forget the World Junior goal. So yeah. yeah, exactly. And I love it. I wear 14 for Theo Fleury, so yeah. Eberle was always my next favorite one without to wear 14. Okay, the rest of you guys. Um, my favorite number would be eight. Um, growing up, he was my favorite player just because he scores goals, and scoring goals is like the best thing about hockey, so that's why. <laughs> Uh, for me, number 12, Joe McGinley used to wear, and I used to like Calgary as a young kid. I watched him a lot, so that's the number I stuck with since I was younger. So, yeah. Okay. Wow, that's pretty unique then. And uh, also Regina Pat's uh, draft pick, and he's an owner over there, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. Wow. And uh, who would you guys uh, say you mirror your game after or try and play like? Uh, I kind of like watching Miko Ranch, and obviously you don't get to see a lot of them playing uh... – 
down to Colorado. I'm kind of a bigger guy, lots of skill. Um, kind of airs on the side in the off the zone of passing rather than shooting. So I kind of like watched him and kind of model that game after him. Good choice. Yeah, for me, I just want to be like Brain Point, not the biggest guy, but he does everything well and he can has nice finish around the net. And he's also a great passer too. Yeah, for me, I'd probably say Johnny Goudreau, a smaller forward who used his speed around the ice. So that's probably what I try to be in my game after. Good choice there, too. And I'm sure you get to see him play lots out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, what are some of your hobbies outside of hockey? Uh, fishing, golfing, kind of in the summer. Obviously, during the season, not a lot of uh, free time. But in the summer, I go down to BC. Uh, I'll do everything on the water and all that kind of stuff. So, okay. yeah. Nice. I'm a big fisher down here too. So yeah. do you do the rivers down here in BC or? No, uh, we've got a place on uh, Lake Kalamaka. So right by the side of the ocean. Oh, that's right. By right on. Mike. Yeah. I'm up there all summer long. Uh, my parents, my uh, in-laws actually on a place up in Vernon. So I'm up there all summer. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great spot. I love that. It ring. is. That's where Mike lost his wedding ring. I uh, did. True story. We were playing football right next day after the wedding. We all had like, there's like 50 of us there all from our lacrosse team and stuff. We're playing football in the water. I go to catch the pass and uh, boom, rings in the water. So all of a sudden, like we're searching, we're searching, we can't find it. Like literally, so she's running up and down the beach, hoping that someone has like a metal detector. Cause I guess somebody had said they were there earlier. No, no luck. Finally, we keep looking, keep looking. And uh, finally, one of my buddies is like, I think it's right on my toe. And I'm like, are you kidding? Pick it up. So sure enough, like second, like 45 minutes, but I got it. <laughs> yeah. This is good and uh, Bowden. Um, yeah, like I like fishing. I go down to little bow lake with a couple buddies. I don't know, that's where I caught my first fish. So kind of go down there. I work at a golf course. I like golfing. Um, and we have a place down in Montana where we're on a oh, lake, cool. bitter lake. So we do some boating, ski doing and stuff like that. So it's awesome. Sweet, sweet, sweet. That's awesome. Uh, for me, I have a cabin out in BC, just like you do. So I like being in the water a lot. Do a lot of water sports like skiing and wakeboarding, and go, go golfing out there a bit with my family. So that's always fun. No, oh, so who's the best go? golfer on Okotoks then? Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bo- Bowden should have an advantage. I mean, working at the golf course. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I hit the ball hit the balls after every shift. So I get pretty dialed in around there, but that's about right it. Right on. Right on. My and, golf, uh, Reed, my, my golf go, game is horrible. Around. Yeah. My golf game is horrible. I, uh, based it on how many balls I lose. I bring 18 balls, one for each hole. And if I lose them all by the ninth hole, my day's done. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Uh, do you guys have any pregame rituals or routines? Um, I mean, obviously your routine, kind of just uh, same thing, like eating at the same time every day. But other than that, I like to stay pretty loose throughout game day. I don't think I kind of excel when I'm kind of wound up tight, uh, kind of like really trying to dial it in. So I kind of like to keep a little loose before the game. I think that kind of helps me. Yeah, for me, I just kind of have my pregame nap for 30 minutes, and then I'll eat around the same time. But like Rieger said, I'm not a big – I like being loose and playing a little bit loose, so – don't have any big rituals yeah i'm, not, I'm like them I, I try to stay just have fun for the game not think too much about it to stay loose and just enjoy it that's good and we've had so many interviews we've had some weird ones uh we had one guy he eats a banana before the game in between the first in between the second in between the third and then one of the after the game and then we have one guy that uh, changes his laces every game uh, one guy blew, blows a balloon up uh, with a straw, like for warming up his lungs. Like some weird ones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, do you have a hidden talent? Uh, I can juggle and I can do the Rubik's Okay. Cube. I think that's about it. Okay, okay. Rubik's Cube without the YouTube uh, tutorial? Yeah, no, I've I memorized. It's all muscle memory. Got all the wow, that a boy. That a boy. Yeah. No, I don't have – I can't think of anything right now. Okay. okay. Uh, I like to think that I'm pretty good at Mario Kart and Wii Golf, so I'll probably say <laughs> oh. one of those is probably my secret talents. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sweet. <laughs> That's, That's pretty, awesome. It's a pretty good one. You're great for parties. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. And yeah. uh, Rieger, uh, bring you back to your uh, first AJHL goal, and do you sell the puck? Oh, man. Uh, well, last year, because it was kind of uh, pretty messy last year with all kind of the regular season exhibition games. Uh, my first regular season goal would have been against the Brooks Bandits, I think, and I do not have the puck. No one grabbed it for me. So I kind of forgot about me to play so many exhibition games throughout the season that – I uh, didn't really feel like the first goal, but yeah. I think that's where our boy uh, Corson Coolman's played last year, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. 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 And uh, wow, that, that one I, I kind of guessed there a bit, but uh, it worked out. Uh, and uh, Bowden, uh, taking you back to your first uh, AJHL goal, you still have the puck. Yeah, we, I was, uh, we played Brooks the first six games. It was kind of tough, and then we played Olds and got a quick shot off and scored a lucky one, but I saw the puck to this day and still have it in my stall. Sweet. And uh, Samuel, last but not least, uh, taking you back to your first goal. Uh, I think it was against Camrose at home, just off the power play scrum. Just knocked the puck in. Goalie was out. And yeah, I have the puck in my stall right now. Okay. And uh, Rieger, obviously uh, you chose to go to the AJHL level, but uh, congratulations on being drafted 68th overall to Cooney Ice. I mean, uh, you never know what's in the future, but... Uh, what was it like hearing your name called? Yeah, um, obviously, I was committed before the draft, so I didn't really kind of pay a lot of attention to the draft. Um, I don't really remember the exact moment that I got drafted, but uh, obviously, Winnipeg's great organization. And uh, yep. yeah, okay. And uh, congratulations on committing to University of Denver. I mean, uh, I don't think you could ask for much better of a hockey school to be heading to. Uh, Why did you choose Denver? We always like to ask that question. Yeah, so uh, my dad uh, kind of a connection to one of the assistant coaches down there, so that kind of. I uh, built that bridge between us and uh, yeah, kind of second year Bantam watched me um, kind of went down to Denver, kind of saw what it was about and uh, yeah, loved it. Awesome. awesome. That's awesome. We, that is awesome. We just had a guy on the other day from Denver. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Bowden, obviously uh, congratulations to you as well. Uh, 43rd overall to uh, the Vancouver giants. Um, and uh, who knows what the future holds, obviously, but uh, how was it like hearing your name called? Yeah, it was good. Like when I got drafted, I was on the plane, got off the plane, going to Philadelphia for a selects tournament. Uh, got a lot of appreciation from everybody, and like excited to be a part of a great program or an organization. And yes, okay. And uh, obviously, congratulations to yourself. Uh, another huge school, and uh, one of me and Ryan's favorites because we're Canucks fans. Uh, University of North Dakota. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I committed right before the draft. I think it was the day before, and. The selling point for me was just the atmosphere in the building and the facility itself was amazing. It's NHL level and not all the coaches from Western Canada. So that's how I got connected out there. Okay. okay. And uh, Samuel, congratulations. Drafted uh, 41st overall to the Regina Pats in 2019. Um, I don't know what your future holds. Uh, have you had any commitment? Uh, is, there, is there a chance that you do head to the dub and uh, play with Connor Bedard? I. Uh, I don't have any commitments yet, so I'm still keeping things open. And Regina is a great place to play. Organization is nice. Everyone's there, just great to be around. So I'll see what happens in the future. Awesome, awesome. If you and guys, uh, what's your guys? Go ahead, Ray. Okay, if you guys were having a dream dinner party, I can invite three famous people, dead or alive. Who do you want to bring? Uh, I'm gonna go Paul Bizanet. Nice, nice. Uh, uh, Leon Dreisaitl, and uh, either Jennifer Lawrence or Will Ferrell, one of the two. There we go. Okay, okay, I like it. Those are good choices. We, and then ones we haven't had, I like it. Uh, yeah, for me, I'd bring The Rock and Kevin Hart. Just that duo was kind of funny. And then, I don't know, I'll bring in like Ovi or Patrick Kane, just because my favorite players. Yeah, sweet. Oh, hopefully, hopefully Ovi, Ovi not after the Stanley Cup. No, not after. <laughs> Maybe a little bit before. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'd probably bring Will Smith, Will Ferrell, and probably Joe McGinley, just because he's one of my favorite players. So, yeah. Good choices that's as well. First, first time we've had Will Smith. but Yeah, that's I'm, a good one. My answers are always Tupac. Seth Rogen as my comedian, and normally it's Shakira, but I'm changing my pick to Paulina Gretzky. 
<laughs> Might as well have one of the Gretzky's there that night. I usually go with uh, Wayne Gretzky, uh, Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco, and uh, I usually throw in a little Carrie Underwood because I know I can beat up Mike Fisher, so I'm good. <laughs> and uh, if, uh, when you guys sign your first professional contract, uh, what's the first thing you guys are buying? Oh, man. I've got no clue. Uh, probably a nice car, I think. Cars are okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I'd be, buy my mom a nice car. I don't know. She always wanted a nice car, so that's what I would do. Good call. Parents driving you every morning, practices and games. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'll probably buy a very expensive warm jacket just to be comfy at all times. <laughs> nice. Nice. Is that a boy? Oh, getting, I like it. Get, getting used to those prairie uh, winters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if there was a competition on the line, some teams do a rookie initiation, and you had to sing one karaoke song, what song are you singing? Ah. Uh... Our team did you guys is, do? Did you guys do rookie really idol? Yeah. yeah, we do rookie idol. Um, our team's really in the country, so I'd probably go kind of with a classic, uh, Springsteen by uh, Eric Church. Eric Church, nice. Oh, yeah, I'd go with uh, "Don't Stop Believing." This classic, Journey. yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably go for uh, Katy Perry, uh, "California Girls" to mine. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> Mine, mine's always this like uh, '90s song by Digital Underground called "Humpty Hump." <laughs> yeah, that's my song. That's my go-to. <laughs> um, if you guys have you guys tried the Michigan or Lacrosse Bowl yet in a game? I know you guys are all super skilled. Uh, no, never have. I don't think my dad would approve of that. So no. <laughs> <laughs> the long car ride home. Yeah. No. Haven't got the opportunity opportunity to, but I don't know. It's a big stretch. You have to do everything right for it to happen, so not likely. Yeah, no, I've haven't had a chance to try it out. Probably wouldn't do it for a while until I get it down pat. I try, okay. to do and it. then I try to do it at beer league hockey, and it's never worked for me. I've tried many times. Doesn't look good. Ryan, hit, it. Ryan, hit him with the draft question. Okay, I was going a different route, but yeah, okay. Um, if you were an animal, what would you be? Uh, I think flying would be pretty cool for like an eagle or something like that. Good choice. Yeah, I'd be a tiger. Okay. But I don't know. They're kind of they're a cat that's mean and can hunt yeah. pretty good. Uh, I don't know. Kind of like swimming, so I'd probably pick a dolphin or something. Pick that would be cool. Yeah, I always say I always say the dolphin as well because I look like a dolphin. I got no hair, and I know it's. <laughs> um, if there's a hundred dollar bill at the bottom of a toilet, twenty dollar bill on the counter, which one are you going for? This is an NHL draft question, so think about it. Think outside the box. Yeah, uh, well, probably the hundred dollars. You can always wash your hands, so I don't see why you wouldn't just Good grab call. it. Wash your hands. Yeah, I'd say the same. Just lots of soap afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm taking the hundred dollars. Just making sure my hands are clean afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And the whole reason for that question is the scouts want to hear you say that because uh, you're willing to get your hands dirty, obviously. Yeah, but we've come up with this ne- better idea, though. You should take both. <laughs> <laughs> True. Take the hundred, wash your hands, and then take the twenty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this uh, two trivia questions I got here. Uh, how many beers fit in the Stanley Cup? Twelve, fourteen, or eighteen? Fourteen. Eighteen. And the second one is how much does the Stanley Cup weigh? Thirty-four and a half. 36 and a half or 40 and a half pounds? 36 and a half. 36. 36. 34 and a half. Oh, oh my. <laughs> uh, what's your guys' uh, color of your stick tape and your favorite Gato color? Uh, I've always been a black tape guy. I think it helps me see the pocket a little bit better. And uh, I think I'm going to go red, the meter color. 
That's the original. Yeah, my I use black tape and I'll alternate, but black tape's my favorite and the uh, blue gator, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, I'm like Bowden, I alternate, but black's my favorite from now and blue gatorade's my favorite kind. Okay, okay. Hey, what about your favorite sports movie? Oh, Happy Gilmore, probably. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Happy Gilmore, slap shot. Okay. okay. Probably Happy Gilmore, or the Mighty Ducks. Nice, nice. And what about favorite sports franchise? It does. I mean, you're not. You don't have to be drafted yet. So, uh, whole family's always been uh, diehard Edmonton Oilers fans. So I have to go with the okay. Oilers. Yeah, game's on right now. Yeah, I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> hey, our Canucks won tonight. Okay, for once. <laughs> we're like we're on, we're on a hot streak here. Two winning, two two game winning streak. Oh yeah, we're pl- <laughs> we're pl- we're planning the parade already. <laughs> and Bowden, uh, I'd say Washington. I don't know. I've been a diehard Caps fan forever. Okay. Uh, let's go to I know I get made fun of at my parents' house, but mm-hmm. that's my team. Okay. 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 What about? I, I don't feel so bad being a Canucks fan then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I gotta keep shooting these, Mike. A yeah, couple of, a couple of them. Anyway. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Favorite Halloween costume? Oh man, uh, I think just dressed up as any kind of animal is always kind of funny for some. Yeah. Okay. Um, my first costume was like a knight with a plastic sword, so I like that one. Uh, mine's probably the Grim, Grim Reaper Ballerina by the pink tooth okay, one. Okay. So my favorite one. I always, uh, I do Don Cherry. I dress up as Don Cherry and go to Canuck games. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really do. I really do. Um, <laughs> uh, if, you guys could play, if you guys could play any other yeah. sports other than hockey professionally, what would it be? Uh, probably baseball. Obviously, not a great sport. To kind of have a family, but I think kind of other than that, the lifestyle is pretty good. It's not too strenuous on your body and make a lot of money. So I think yeah, a lot good. of money. <laughs> um, not the tallest guy, but I'd play basketball just because that you're not playing too many games, but it looks pretty fun. Uh, I'll have to go with soccer. Okay. I play. Okay. If you yeah, you only- still uh, you still play pretty competitive soccer, do you not? Uh, I used to, but I, I stopped this year. Okay, this is my last time. Okay, okay. okay. Um, and if a scout or GM were to ask, uh, what do you guys bring to the table or describe your game? Yeah, um, I think I'm a powerful, fast two way forward. Uh, I think I'm good with kind of finding and creating passing lanes. I think I play with a lot of intensity. Um, and I think I also bring kind of a pretty unique uh, size and skill combo to the table. So. Yeah, for me, I just I bring uh, lots of offensive ability. I like to put the puck in the net, and I like to set up others. It's my playmaking, too. And I, I play with a bit of an edge, and I like to hit. Uh, I play with speed, and I, I'm, I think I like to say I'm an agile skater, so there's lots of moves in the offensive zone and gain pucks in. Sure. And uh, what's the best advice a coach has ever given you? Uh, forget about or a sports one. quote or a, um, or a sports quote. Yeah, probably just forget about the last shift. Um, obviously, I think I have a tendency to kind of dwell on past shifts and kind of miss a chance. Kind of thinking about that for the rest of the game. So just kind of forget about that kind of stuff. Helps me play a little bit better. It's a good one. It, yeah, kind of like Rieger, just forget about it if you have a bad game or. I don't know, bad shift. Like he said, I like I get hard on myself sometimes and it kind of infects my uh, play. So just forget about stuff. Yeah, I like those two. Mine was you can't change the past. Just keep moving forward and do what you do the best you can. Mike, did we already shoot Dream Venue? Uh, nope. Okay. What's your guys' dream venue? Uh, obviously, it's... Uh... Not the Oilers' home rink anymore, but Rexall Place have been pretty cool. I was kind of around there a lot when I was younger, so it would have kept in my dream place okay. to play. Um, 
and probably like uh just the saddle dome growing up around there just that's where i had my first timbits game so yeah, oh, yeah. okay okay in between old timbits in between yeah periods, right yeah jeez oh, I always like seeing that game and seeing the one kid that's just like doing circles and doesn't care about where the puck is or anything. It's awesome. Uh, like the in mind is the saddle room too. I think that'd be pretty cool to play in. Okay. Hey fellas, I just want to uh, thank you guys all for taking the time for us today and coming on and chat with us. Uh, obviously you guys know we're big fans of you guys and we know you guys are going to go far in hockey and you got fans in us for life. So we appreciate it. That's for sure. 